Well, hello all you trig lovers out there. Our topic tonight for day two of trig is called the six trig functions. So yesterday we talked about three of them. Um, our goal will be to quickly review those three and then learn three new ones for a total of six trig functions that we should be aware of. So let me start by just reviewing our right triangle. And remember, all of this is done on the right triangle. And to represent that right triangle, we put this nice little square in the corner. And we said yesterday that the hypotenuse is the easiest one to label. It's across from that right angle. This symbol that we used in our angle here, it's Greek letter theta. Okay, and that's just an angle holder. And we said if you mark that angle, you have the word adjacent, which means next to. You have two sides next to that angle. One of them should be the hypotenuse, adjacent would be the other. And then the opposite is the one across from your angle theta. So yesterday we talked about the acronym to help us remember sine, cosine, and tangent and their corresponding opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. So let's go ahead and put that in our notebook again. The word we used was SOHCAHTOA. So see if you can spell that still. So is S-O-H, okay, K-C-A-H, and TOA, T-O-A, SOHCAHTOA. And again, this S stood for sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and put in our notebook those three trig functions that we talked about. And again, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, and tangent. And now our goal today is to talk about three more trig functions. And we're going to title these the three reciprocal trig functions. And we do want to refer to them as reciprocals. So the first one is read cosecant. <clears throat> okay, so let's get that written out, cosecant. And we're going to abbreviate that with CSC. And cosecant, and let's go ahead and put an arrow here, is the reciprocal of sine. You'll notice that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And if you flip that upside down, you get hypotenuse over opposite. So again, the reciprocal means you're taking this fraction and flipping it upside down. So the reciprocal of sine is called cosecant, and we're going to flip opposite over hypotenuse to hypotenuse over opposite. Now, each sine, cosine, and tangent has a reciprocal trig function. The next one is secant of theta, or SEC, and this is the reciprocal of cosine. You'll notice cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the reciprocal of cosine is secant. And lastly, the reciprocal of tangent is read cotangent, and its abbreviation is COT. And again, notice tangent is opposite over adjacent, so cotangent is adjacent over opposite, opposite. So all reciprocal, again, means is to flip your fraction. Okay, so again, we are flipping the fraction. Now, it is important that we understand which trig function goes with which reciprocal. And I think, and hopefully you'll agree, that tangent and cotangent are the easiest to, re to remember. They obviously sound the same. Tangent, cotangent, they both use the word tangent. So, I think that one's easy to keep straight. Sine to cosecant and cosine to secant are the two that you really have to keep straight. And, I mean, this is not, you know, anything mind-blowing by any mean. Um, some people will say cosine starts with the C and ends in an S, and its reciprocal starts with the S and ends in the C. So that's how they remember secant. Um, again, I'm just throwing it out there. You use what you need to to memorize it, but that's one thing some people have said in the past. Another trick just to, to talk about saying them, you'll notice, notice if it starts with the C, it starts with the word co. For example, Cosine starts with a C, so it starts co and then sine. Cosecant starts with a C, so it's cosecant. Cotangent starts with a C, so it's co and then tangent. Anything that starts with a C, make sure you say co first. All right, so here's our first example. Given the triangle below, express the value of the six trig functions. All right, well... All we have to first do is label every side of the triangle. So maybe make a note in your book, we want to label all the sides of the triangle. So we know two sides of a triangle, so think back to your geometry days. If you know two sides of a triangle, how do you find the third side or the missing side? 
what formula would you use to get the missing side of a triangle? Well, perhaps you've guessed it already, and hopefully you have. It's the Pythagorean Theorem. So hopefully you'll recall the Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, the most important part of that Pythagorean theorem is that c squared has to be the hypotenuse. Okay, that's the only rule there is. c squared has to be the hypotenuse. So if I use my triangle here, I'm going to label the sides. Remember, hypotenuse should be the easiest one across from the right angle. Oops. All right, so there's my h for hypotenuse. I'm going to mark the given angle. I'm going to go get my adjacent next. Remember, adjacent means next to. These two sides are next to the angle but one of them already has the name hypotenuse, so this must be the adjacent side, which leaves this to be the opposite side. All right, so my only rule is I need to put the hypotenuse in the value of C. So it doesn't matter where the 3 goes, whether it's A or B. The only one that matters is the hypotenuse is 4. So if I quickly run through my math, I'm going to get x squared plus 9 equals 16 subtract over my 9, x squared equals 7, take the square root, I get x equals, now hopefully you're thinking plus and minus the square root of 7, but since I'm talking about the side of a triangle, I'm only going to use positive radical 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and label that side now. Alright, now that I've got all my sides labeled, here comes the easy part. I'm going to jot down Sokoto at the top so I keep them straight. Okay, try to do it without looking back in your notes. So ka toa. And I'm just going to run through my six trig functions. Let's start with sine. Sine of theta, according to Sokotoa, is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at what I labeled opposite, I'm going to say that's radical 7 over the hypotenuse of 4. And I'm done. I'm going to go get cosine. Cosine of theta. So katoa is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 over 4, and I'm done. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so looking at my picture, I labeled opposite as radical 7, adjacent is 3, and I'm done. All right, that's half of them. That's 3 out of 6. Now come the reciprocals, and it's very easy if you know the first three. All right, let's see if we can remember the names. I'm going to start with tangent because I think that's the easiest. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Remember, co for CO and then T for tangent, cotangent theta. Now, here's the deal. You're just going to take tangents and find its reciprocal. So you're going to take your radical 7 over 3, and the reciprocal means flip it upside down. So I'm going to get 3 over radical 7. Now, there's only one hiccup here. You can't leave a radical in the denominator. So we call this rationalizing the denominator. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by radical 7. So on top, I'm going to say I've got 3 radical 7. And on the bottom, I hope you can do this in your head by now, radical 7 times radical 7 is radical 49, which is really just the number 7. Any radical times itself basically just kills the radical and you get what's under there. All right. Now the two tough ones to keep straight, sine and cosine. I'm going to go get cosine's reciprocal. And remember, the little trick that some people like to use is to reverse the order. So it's going to start with an S and end in a C. So it's S-E-C for secant theta. And again, I'm just going to take this fraction and flip it. If cosine was 3 fourths, then secant is 4 thirds. And it's done. All right, then i got to go get sine. It is cosecant. And I guess one way to think about it, it has that big S in the middle for cosecant, for sine, theta, equals, I'm going to flip it upside down here, sine upside down, so I've got 4 over radical 7. And again, I don't want to leave a radical in the denominator, so I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by radical 7. So I've got 4 radical 7 all over 7. And there you have it, our six trig functions. All right, let's try another one. 
This time they're not going to give us a picture, they're going to give us a trig function instead. If cosine of theta equals 12 over 13, find the remaining five trig functions. So there's six of them total, they gave us one, we need the other five. Now I don't suggest doing this without a picture. In this um, second half of the course in trigonometry, we're going to draw a triangle for every problem we do pretty much this whole second half of the year. So let's go ahead and draw a right triangle. Remember this is all on a right triangle. Put my right angle in. And now I'm just going to put theta. I can either put it in the upper or the lower corner. I'm just going to put it in the lower one. All right, so now I've got to label two sides of the triangle based off what's given to me. And let's go ahead and jot cosine of theta equals 12 over 13 down. All right, now run through Sokotoa in your head. See if you can do it without looking at it, you know, in front of you. Sokotoa. I have cosine, so I've got ka, which is a over h. Okay, hopefully you've, you've got that memorized by now. And go ahead and put a over h in your notebook there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and label hypotenuse adjacent opposite on my triangle. So I'm going to start with my hypotenuse. I'm going to do my adjacent next. Here's my angle. These two sides are adjacent. Here's my adjacent. And opposite means across. All right. Now I'm just going to label what I said about cosine. I just said the adjacent is 12. So this side is a 12. The hypotenuse is 13. And all I got that was from Sokotoa. And I've got to go get that missing side. So Pythagorean theorem again. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, c squared is the only important term that has to be the hypotenuse. So that has to be the number 13. So I've got a squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. a squared plus 144 equals 169. a squared equals 25. So I get a equals, remember, plus or minus 5 because I'm taking the square root. But we're talking about the side of a triangle, so we're only going to take it as a positive 5. All right, now comes the easy part. We did the hard part. We labeled the missing sides. Um, we labeled opposite hypotenuse adjacent. We found our missing side. And now we just have to write out the five remaining trig functions. All right, so I'm going to scroll up here, and I'm going to start with sine. I'll write that Sokotoa out again. Sokotoa pretty important by now if you haven't figured that out. So I'm going to say sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I just look at my picture, here's my opposite, here's my hypotenuse, 5 over 13. Um, I already know cosine, they gave it to me. They said it was 12 over 13. And then lastly, tangent, I'm going opposite over adjacent, so that's 5 over 12. Now, remember, if you know those three, the reciprocals are a piece of cake. You're just going to reciprocate, or take the flipped fraction of each one. Sine's reciprocal has the S in the middle, so that's cosecant. And if you flip 5 over 13, you should get 13 over 5. Cosine kind of reverses the order, starts with the C ends in the S, so that's secant theta equals 13 over 12. And tangent's the easy one, that's your cotangent theta equals 12 over 5. And you've got it. All right, let's try another one. Cotangent of theta equals radical 5 over 2. Find the remaining trig functions. Well, there's a total of 6. They gave us 1, so that means there's 5 left. So let's go ahead and get a picture set up. Okay, start with your right triangle. Now, let's be smart in this one. They didn't give me one of the normal sine, cosine, or tangents. They gave me a reciprocal. So here's what I say to myself. The reciprocal of cotangent belong to tangent. So if I think of tangent and think Sokotoa, what is tangent equal to in words? What over what? Sokotoa, T-O-A. That's opposite over adjacent. So that means they're giving me the reciprocal. They're giving me adjacent over opposite. So I'm going to say this is actually the adjacent side, and this is actually the opposite side. 
all right? So remember, they're giving me the reciprocal. So just go ahead and label theta in one of your angles, and we'll label our opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. So I'm going to start with hypotenuse. I think that's the obvious one. And then adjacent, remember, means next to. And then opposite means across from. And now I'm just going to label the two sides they gave me. Um, they said the adjacent is radical 5, and the opposite is 2. So this time, before I can list out all six trig functions, I just need to get that missing side. So again, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, the only one we care about is c squared. That has to be the hypotenuse, which is what we don't know this time. So I've got 2 squared plus radical 5 squared equals c squared. Well, 2 squared is 4. Radical 5 squared is beautiful because the square and the square root just cancel. So I've got 5 equals c squared. Uh, so c squared equals 9, and c equals just a nice old 3. All right, pause it, try it on your own. See if you can list out sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And then check back and see if we have the same thing. All right, well, there's mine. Um, hopefully, you're getting the same idea. Got my opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And then I just flip those upside down and, of course, rationalize because I can't leave that radical in the denominator on these two.